This is getting really overwhelming. But I feel like I need to talk about it partially for me because I don't know, that's just how I deal with stuff is by talking about it. But also because um, what happened today is a very common uh, bird emergency, unfortunately. And hopefully by sharing my experience, um, someone can learn from this. I will say, um, compared to this morning, it does look like the story is going to have a happy ending. Sorry, I'm really tired and like, I just, you know, had a really, really stressful last couple of hours and now I'm kind of, kind of crashing just a little bit. Anyway, so what happened was I was getting ready for work. I was literally like on my way out the door to work. And the very last thing I went to do before leaving was uh, putting Cusco in the aviary with the budgies. He goes in a couple hours after they do because he needs a little bit more sleep. So I went to put him in and now keep in mind, I had been getting ready for work in my bathroom, which is like, it's an ensuite, So it's part of my bedroom, which is where the birds are. And I heard nothing, no squawking, no fighting, nothing, nothing out of the, the ordinary, just their usual morning chatter. Anyway, so I go to put Cusco in the aviary and Chip is just head covered, covered in blood. Um, it was one of the most shocking things I think I've ever seen on one of my pets before. Um, it was awful. And his feet were bloody, his chest was bloody, his head was just soaked. Um, it was dripping off of a perch. Um, it was just everywhere and none of the others were acting stressed. Like the couple of times that they have had like little squabbles, which I've talked about before. Um... Like, you can tell that that's what it is, because first of all, you hear them, and then second, when you look in there, they're all kind of upset, whereas, like, this time they weren't. It was just Chip, and he was just completely in shock. Like, he was just standing there, covered in blood, and so I was like, oh my god, so I couldn't grab him, because he was panicked. Like, he was really stressed. I was really stressed. Um, So I called my vet. I, I just called him freaking out. I was like, what do I do? So they thought it was a blood feather. So they talked me through how to try and find it. He was so bloody that I couldn't, I can't find it on him anywhere. Um, but the bleeding has stopped, so we don't know yet what caused it. But he has to go, we're going in in a little bit here. And they're gonna try and find it and clean it up for him a little bit. He's acting better now, but he's definitely upset. Like he's definitely uncomfortable. Um, and he keeps trying to get all the blood off of his face, poor guy. Normally in like an emergency like this, I'm pretty level-headed, but I've had so many close calls this winter that like now I just shut down. <laughs> like it's just, there's been so many little things and like all of them have just been freak things like a blood feather or like just, just freak things. <laughs> Um, I've vlogged about the others on here, so I'm, I'm not gonna reiterate them. It's just been so draining that like I'm doing everything I can and I, I don't know, we're just having a really shitty winter of a lot of bad luck. I don't know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's just like the, the pet owner guilt of like, how could I have prevented this situation? When like, honestly, right now they're suspecting it's a, a broken blood feather and that's a completely unpreventable thing. It's just, it's one of those things that just happens. And so logically, I know it's not my fault, but my default setting and not just for my pets, but for, for most of my life, most areas of my life is when stuff like this happens is what can I do for next time to stop it from happening again? And Unfortunately, with the incidents we've had this winter, none of them are stick out like, you did this wrong, fix it for next time. It's all just like, it's all just freak things. Um, and it's just really exhausting. All right, so this is where I think it happened. This whole perch is just really bloody. There's a lot of blood on the floor and uh, on the walls just from where he was flipping around. He's in the back here, so it's the other side of his head. Um, I'm gonna, I'm trying not to disturb him too, too much, but everybody else is fine and chatty, but it's this other side of his head. Oh, he just decided to go out. 
So yeah, um, I'm not gonna get in super close, but that's that's what I found. Um, and it's been rough. He's doing okay now. He's definitely a little tired. He's sleeping quite a bit. Um, so I just need to watch him. And we're gonna be at the vet in a couple of hours. Okay. So had some time to collect myself and stop panicking. <laughs> also ignore ignore these dishes because I was gonna clean the house today since I'm now home. I didn't do it. <laughs> no, okay. So a little update, just getting ready to go to the vet, uh, the avian vet to get a follow-up, see if we can find whatever caused all the bleeding this morning. Hopefully if it's a blood feather, we can just get it removed. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, that's the dream. Um, yeah. <laughs> We'll see. I'm feeling a little bit less like pessimistic about this whole situation now. Um, yes, it's been a really rough month for my birds health-wise. We've had some very close calls and we've had um, just, just some weird stuff has been happening. All of them were complete accidents. All of them were like not even preventable accidents, like just freak things. And that had me feeling really down this morning, but I kind of, before I go commence budgie roundup and try to get Chip in a cage, I just wanted to pop on here really quick just to say that upon further reflection, there's always going to be things that happen to your animals that you can't control and unfortunate situations and surprise situations and every possible thing under the sun. But I think, you know, yes, we've had a lot of bad luck in the last pretty much since the new year, like the last six or so weeks, we've come out of all of those situations okay. And everybody got vet care, everybody's okay. And I've made husbandry changes to try and stay ahead of any potential accidents or hazards, what have you. Um, so yeah, even though I'm doing everything I can and this stuff has happened anyway, um, the you know, we're getting through it. Everybody's coming out in one piece and that's really all you can ask for, I think, as a pet owner, is you do what you can for your animals and you ride through the tough times. And yeah, that's that's just life sometimes, I guess. That aside, I need to go round up Chip and try and get him in a travel cage. I'm actually gonna be using Cusco's new sleep cage for this just because it's easier to convince the budgies to go into something they understand than trying to convince them to get into the carrier. They hate the carrier. I'm, I'm hoping that I can just bait Cusco's travel cage with some millet and Chip will just go in. I feel like it's probably not gonna be that simple. situations but in my defense I've had a couple of those this month <laughs> so the funds are a little low and yeah so hopefully the wait's not too much longer I'm gonna try and uh, vlog what I can of the actual exam um, if they'll let me he's not impressed at all I mean I guess it's good he's feeling better Okay, so ignore the fun lighting and this little like branch mustache on my face. 
um, it's nighttime now. <laughs> so I didn't get a chance to film at the vet. They were very, very busy, so I wanted to make things quicker for them. But I just wanted to give everybody an update because it's a weird one. So you can see Chip, still pretty messy. We cleaned him up as best we could. Um, but the short version is that for the immediate time being, he is okay. What actually happened is that he tore the uh, inner third eyelid, I believe it was. So they have like their regular eyes that open and close like ours, and they also have a protective internal third eyelid. And that's the one he tore. <laughs> the vet has no idea how it happened. He has never seen this kind of injury before. And I was like, that sounds about right. That sounds like Chip. <laughs> Anyway, so he was a little bit worried that it might potentially mean that there's a tumor or something developing there um, if the skin is that fragile. And it did reopen during the exam, so it's still it's still very fragile. So it's going to take a couple weeks to heal, provided he doesn't reopen it. Um, if he does reopen it, it'll be longer. And if it continues to be a problem, we'll be looking at surgery. Fingers crossed <laughs> that we don't have to have surgery. Okay. He handled the vet like a champ. He's never actually been... Uh, to a vet before. He's always been really healthy and never had anything else going on. So this was his first time being like manhandled, especially where he was bleeding and, you know, already upset. He did really well. He didn't fight them very much at all. I was really proud <laughs> that he did really well. And uh, my vet was really relieved that it wasn't anything more serious. So we're all pretty happy. Um, the best news out I got out of the whole thing is that this is not an injury that he will bleed out from, which is always a risk with budgies because they have very little blood in them and it tends to like squirt everywhere. <laughs> so he said it's an ugly injury, but it's not a fatal injury. So even if he does reopen it, it's not, it's not an emergency. So hopefully it stays closed, it gets a chance to heal, um, and that's the end of it. <laughs> Alright you guys, so I'm gonna end this here. Um, before I go though, I just wanted to say a really quick thank you to all of the people that I've met in the online pet community who have been so supportive today. You guys are the reason I rushed to get this video out. So many of you reached out with really supportive messages and comments and suggestions and trying to help and just being there for me. And that was really sweet because as I'm sure a lot of you know, uh, in real life, um, a lot of people don't always understand just how attached we get to our birds and how important they are to us. A lot of the time it's like, oh, it's just a bird. And even my vet said today, he was like, a lot of people wouldn't have brought their bird in for something like this. So, you know, thank you for, for looking after your pet, I guess. I don't know. It was a weird comment. Um, but I'm just really glad to have had so much support today. It was really stressful. I normally manage these things a little bit better emotionally. But um, yeah, my emotions are running a little bit thin and I was really glad that so many people were there for me. And massive shout out to my vet who squeezed me in today on a what was a really overbooked, busy surgery day for them. So he literally like squeezed me in between appointment slots. So very grateful to him and very grateful to my family as well for not only covering this bill um, until I can pay them back, but also for driving me to the clinic and, you know, just reassuring me that this wasn't the end of the world and that he was going to be okay. Both very grateful um, that this had a happy ending. I'll definitely keep you updated over on my Twitter. Um, so if you want to know how this ends, shoot me a follow over there. But yeah, um, I know I just uploaded like 24 hours ago, but I really wanted to get this out. I really want to be real with you guys about pet ownership and about what I go through, especially with my exotics. Um, so I wanted to get this up right away because I know a lot of you were following along on the internet. <laughs> so thank you so much for all of the support and I'll see you next time, hopefully in a less stressful situation. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody.